Greetings, fellow children of time and space, this is your host, Amaya Shadow, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another installment of Answers from the Tardis. Now, I'm betting all of you are wondering, Yami, you promised a Let's Play on Sonic Mania. Why is it that you haven't uploaded any videos yet of it? And the main reason for that is because of two reasons that I came up with. Well, technically three reasons that I came up with when I was recording my very first video of it. And the very first um, reason is, obviously, that there are so many YouTubers playing this game right now. I felt that this game play would be very overshadowed on my channel, just for the simple fact that more well-known YouTubers are playing this right now, including the Sonic YouTubers like Kobanamani456, and then, of course, there are the stream let's plays that have been done by YouTubers like Skyward Wing, and I wasn't up to challenging that, because it was like, I knew for a fact that if I started uploading this, I wouldn't get noticed. And the um, big thing about YouTube is that YouTube is a competitive area. All YouTubers, sure, they enjoy helping other YouTubers, but when it comes right down to it, they all are very competitive, and they want their channel to be noticed more than the other YouTubers. So, I didn't see me getting noticed whatsoever, so I decided to not play this game. The other reason is because of the simple fact that this game is heavily nostalgic based, and that's um, not um, surprising. It's a classic Sonic game, and don't get me wrong, I was raised on classic Sonic games. Uh, my very first Sonic game was Sonic Adventure 2, uh, not Sonic Adventure, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, sorry, I got that confused, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and I remember putting endless hours into that game, endless hours back when I was a child. Some of my best memories of Sonic the Hedgehog were definitely from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. But when I played this, it was like I wasn't feeling it because now we're in a day and age where modern Sonic is more noticed than classic Sonic. And when it gets right down to it, I'm more of a modern Sonic fan. I love the stories. I love the music. I love the gameplay mechanics. I love everything about modern Sonic which I'm already seeing my TARDIS doors being knocked down by the hordes of the Sonic fan base. I'm like, oh, so you like games like Sonic 06, it's Sonic Last World, and, uh, that, 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 Sonic Boom, um, and Boom Rise of Lear. No, 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 no. I never said that at all. You're not listening to me. I said gameplay mechanics, music, story. Sonic 06 is bad for being a broken and incomplete game. That much is known. But there are things that we can take from Sonic 06 that are actually really good. Music in Sonic 06, for example. Some of the best music I've heard in a modern Sonic game in a long time. And I know I'm getting going to get um, the fires of hell rained down on me for saying that. Because it's like, people like music from games like Sonic Elite, Sonic Generations, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, I'm not really a big fan of the Sonic Unleashed music whatsoever. I don't see why. It, it was really good music, but I'm a really big fan of Sonic 06 music. But I'm getting sidetracked. So, when it gets right down to it, when I look at this, I see it more of a game that you need to actually sit in a room, take your time with, and just enjoy it. Be fully immersed. And that's exactly what I did. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be bringing a Let's Play of Sonic Mania on my channel as I originally planned. However, we're still going to be giving my thoughts about this game and of course give it a grade on my own opinions and my own feelings towards it and we're going to break it off into five sections i might be getting that wrong but we're going to break it off on gameplay mechanics story music stage um, the decision of the stages that they made in this game and the difficulty of these stages and of course the just overall um overall the graphics of this game so first off we're going to start with the gameplay mechanics and we don't really have to get too in depth with this all the gameplay mechanics are tried and true you know them you love them from the iconic um, spin dash that classic sonic is known for to even knuckles's gliding and punching ability all these abilities are well known and they are pretty simple um, um to do i mean it's not like you need to go on the internet, find an instruction manual, and be like, Oh, hey, press this button to um, do this, or press this button to do that! No, you don't need to do something like that. And it is very weird that we're in a day and age where we have to do stuff like that now. But, when it gets right down to it, the gameplay mechanic, tried and true, 
definitely worked like a regular classic Sonic game, and it worked well. It worked insanely well. So for my grade for gameplay mechanics, we definitely give it a 10 out of 10. Now, we're going to move on to story. Story, on the other hand, is not really that prominent in a classic Sonic stage. I mean, as stage? So classic Sonic game! Sorry! In a classic Sonic game, we don't really notice story. However, this one definitely gave off a story vibe to it. And I'm only going to mention the two, well, the most important moment of this game, and it is a spoiler if you haven't know um, haven't played this game yet. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please leave now. Anyway, the spoiler for this game is the true ending of this game, and that's the supersonic stage. At the very end of the game, we end up um, defeating Dr. Eggman, but mm, Dr. Robotnik, I refuse to call classic Eggman, Eggman. I just flat out refuse. So we end up defeating Dr. Robotnik and, of course, the true boss of the game, the Heavy King. And the objective of this game was obviously to stop the Heavy Game, uh, uh, Heavy Game, Heavy King and Dr. Um, Dr. Robotnik from getting control of the Phantom Ruby, which was the little jewel that was found at the very beginning of the game. And at the end of the game, the Chaos Emeralds actually reacted to the Phantom Ruby in a way that was unexpected, but for those that haven't looked up any lore about the Phantom Ruby yet, the Phantom Ruby has the ability to warp space and time. And every time it does this, it gives off a little sound effect that is very familiar if you've been paying attention to all of the Sonic Forces trailers as of recent days. And the reason why it's so familiar is because in the very first trailer that Infinite was showcased in with all of the other villains, of Sonic Forces, he threw a bunch of magenta-shaped cubes at Sonic, Classic Sonic, and of course, the Avatar. And it gave off this weird kind of like sound effect. I can't really explain it. It kind of like... I honestly don't know how to explain it, really. But when it gets right down to it, the Phantom Ruby, when it used its power, always gave off that same sound effect. It always gave off that same sound effect. So, what I truly believe is that the Phantom Ruby actually has some tie to Infinite and Sonic Forces, which makes me believe that Sonic Mania is a prequel leading into Sonic Forces, which is really well done, honestly. It was really well done, because never has there been a Sonic game that actually has that kind of continuation into another game before. Ever! Never! Never, ever, ever! So, when I saw that, I was like, oh my god! This is a prequel to Sonic Forces! I wasn't expecting that! And, what even makes me believe that more is the fact that the very last splash screen that we see of the true ending is Sonic standing beside the, um, Sonic Mania logo in the exact same pose that he was standing in when he appeared in the very first Sonic Forces trailer. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, are they just messing with our heads or is that trying to tell us something? I don't know. It could be just a coincidence. A very big coincidence, but a coincidence nonetheless. Anyway, for story, I'm definitely going to give Sonic Mania another 10 out of 10. I was enjoyed enjoying it from start to finish. I was immersed. I loved it. Now, <clears throat> we're going to move on to music. Yet again, unex doesn't really need much of an explanation. All of the remixes of every single stage theme was phenomenal. Every time I listened to an iconic stage theme, I was literally drawn in. I was reliving memories past gone of so many fun moments with my Sega Genesis way back when. And, ho oh, ho, I was enjoying it from start to finish. For those that know, don't know, my favorite classic Sonic stage has always been and always will be Chemical Plant Zone because it wasn't the game's the stage itself that I liked, it was the music, because I can remember myself hearing that theme playing in my head over and over and over, even after I completely put the game away. I just loved 
chemical plant zone so much and to this day that has not changed so hearing the remix of chemical plant zones theme i was like thank you you did this justice you did this justice christian whitehead you and your team have done justice when it comes to music gameplay mechanics and of course the story but that's only three things so far so that gets another 10 out of 10 but what about your decision for the stages in this game that's where i'm gonna have to punish you guys for because i know this game was heavily revolving around the stone i know that for a fact but when it gets right down to it and this is just my opinion i don't like that i honestly do not it's, it shows that when it gets right down to it you played it too safe you played it too safe you are playing things to safe. Is that what this generation is all about? Playing it safe, not being original, being creative? I can understand if you would want to throw in a few stages as a bit of a, a few tried and true stages as a bit of a tutorial. I could understand it if you brought in Green Hill Zone, uh, Flying Battery Zone, and Chemical Plant Zone. But then bring in brand new stages that have never been seen before for Classic Sonic. I would have loved that. But, unfortunately, we didn't get that. When it gets right down to it, I believe there was four original stages. I'm also counting the classics at uh, the Supersonic stage as well, so I think it is about four. And that's, of course, the Egg Reverie, uh, Titanic Monarch, Press Garden, and Studiopolis Zone. Those are the only original stages for this game. And I think when it gets right down to it, those are my favorite stages outside of Chemical Plant Zone in this entire game. I loved the, um, the, the way they looked. I liked the way they played out. I liked how colorful and vibrant each stage looked. And each stage looked. I loved the bosses in them. And with each stage that we played, the difficulty only ramped up higher and higher and higher. And I enjoyed that. I didn't want Classic Sonic to be easy because at this point in time, I've played all the Classic Sonic games with a passion to death. To death. So coming into this, I was actually expecting me to just blow through this game without any difficulty. I was proven wrong. Multiple times. Multiple times. And the best example of that would be Titanic Monarch because the gameplay mechanics in that stage was an entirely new experience for me. And for those that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm mostly talking about those ma magnetic orbs that would draw Sonic in and you would have to literally direct yourself in the way you want to go. Otherwise, you were going to either get thrown into a ma another magnetic orb or thrown into a, a pit of spikes that was obviously placed nearby just to frighten you. And frighten you. And when I saw that, I was like, oh my god, what kind of hell am I in? So it was like, seeing that, I was like, okay, I've got to take my time. But the thing is, with Classic Sonic, you really can't be taking your time. Because back then, time was of the essence. If you ran, um, even, if you got to, I believe it's like nine minutes, I'm not too certain. If you ended up getting to nine minutes, you would run out of time and you would have to start over. You would have to start over from whatever checkpoint you were at, or if you haven't hit a checkpoint at all, you would restart from the very beginning of the stage. And that sucks. That really does suck. So it's like, ugh! I actually ended up dealing with that five times in a row on Titanic Monarch. Never have I ever experienced something like that in a Sonic game whatsoever lately. But when I um, did that, I was like, oh my god. This is definitely my childhood, because it's like, way back in my childhood, when I didn't know what I was doing with a classic Sonic stage, I would end up running out of time. And I think the stage that I actually failed the most in, in a classic Sonic stage in game, I'm not too certain what the name of it was. I don't think it was in Sonic 2, I want to say it's Sonic 3, because I think I'm confusing it with Casino Night Zone, it was kind of similar to it. It was kind of similar to it, and for those that don't know what I'm talking about, it was the stage that had the little barrel that you had to time your jumps on at, and if you got didn't know how to do that right, you were stuck there. You were not going to be able to leave. You were not going to be able to leave that spot. And, oh my god, so many times did I fail in that one area. I was like, 
No more! I don't want to see it anymore! I don't want to see it anymore! I don't want to see it anymore! So I'm just... Sorry, my recording just went out. But I am so happy that Krisha Whitehead and his team on Sonic Mania did not bring in a stage like that. Otherwise, it would be very great inducement. So, moving on from there... I am definitely going to say that the gameplay and the difficulty of the stages definitely gets a 10 out of 10. However, when it comes to choosing the stages that you chose, I'm definitely going to say you guys get an 8.5 out of me. Just And 8.5 definitely is a very high B, just for the simple fact that all of the stages were beautifully designed, they were vibrant, they were colorful, they were alive, but the thing is, I would have preferred more original stages compared to more iconic stages. I, that's just me. I might be um, I'm the only person that would say that, but it's just me. It's my opinion. If you don't like it, the TARDIS doors are to your left, leave. But, um, moving on from that. Rap. I basically just um, explained that already, so we're just going to completely um, wipe that off the plate. Now, with that out of the way, I'm going to say that my main grade for this game is definitely an A-. minus. Not going to say it's um, bad for it to have an A-, but if there is going to be more Classic Sonic games like this, that means you have room for improvement. And hopefully, if there is more Classic Sonic games, I hope there will be more original stages, and you won't rely too heavily on nostalgia-based stages. Now, moving on from that, I honestly don't know what is going to be next for my channel, because it's like, at the moment, my money is a bit tight, I've got to um, do, take care of a few things outside of the internet, as well as take care of some game pre-orders that I myself want to do. As you guys may already guess, I've got both Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon pre-ordered already, and I've still got to pay on those, and right now, I am anxiously waiting for more news from Sega on Sonic Forces, because I want to go ahead and get that pre-ordered and paid for as soon as possible, because it's like, I know for a fact that there's going to be a lot of people buying this game. There's no denying that. There's no denying there's going to be a lot of people buying Sonic Forces. There's just no and I get whatsoever. So, when it gets right down to it, my money is tight. I don't know what I'm going to do. There is still some plans for a horror Let's Play on my channel. However, I don't know where to go with this because right now, my PS4 is actually running out of space. I'm almost out of space on my PS4, and that's kind of scary considering it is the basic PS4. It's only got 500 gigabytes worth of space, so it's like, I'm going to have to try and free up some space, but when it comes right down to it, the thing that's taking up the most type of, the most space on my hard drive is the games that I actively play with friends, and I don't want to delete those games. So, right now, I could do a Let's Play on Until Dawn, but the thing is, I'm a bit iffy on it, because if the game's not really scary, more that it is, you've got to be very careful with the decisions you make in that game. Otherwise, you're going to end up killing everyone. And I'm the guy that literally overthinks a lot when it comes to things like that. So, I don't know. Maybe if you guys want to see a Let's Play on it, let me know down in the comment section below. And I will definitely get to download it. I will definitely get to download it. Because I have it for free. Because it was available as a free game for the PlayStation Plus free games once before. I'm not sure if it was last month or, the month, or this month. But I will download it if you guys are interested in it. Anyway, that is all the time I have for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts. Oh, one other thing before I do leave, there is this thing floating around that Modern Sonic is going to end up killed off just because Classic Sonic and Sonic Mania did so well. I honestly don't believe that. It'd be a mistake for Sega to do that. Honestly, I believe they should actually split up the franchise and make a Classic Sonic game as well as a modern Sonic game every so often. That's how I see them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't played this game yet, it's $19.99 on the PlayStation Store. Get it when you can. It is definitely worth it. Anyway, that is all the time I have for today. Thank you all for watching, and as always, this is your host, Mario Shadow, saying long, see, and I'll see you for the next adventure. Goodbye, everyone! <laughs>